Hi students, my name is Leslie Kamiko and I am your classroom dance teacher and I'm coming to you all the way from my beautiful farm in the Willamette Valley of Oregon where I live off the land. You can see some sheep in the background. There's one. There's some. So today's request comes all the way from the Bering Strait School District from Karen Baranek, a social and studies and science facilitator up in the BSSD. Shout out to folks in the BSSD. Thank you to Bethany Fernstrom, currently teaching third grade in Unilakleet, Alaska, who taught me how to sew my fantastic intergalactic cuss book. If you don't know what a cuss book is, because you're looking in from somewhere else, look it up. K-U-S-P-U-K, sometimes spelled Q-A-S-P-E-Q. No U's, I know. Check it out, see what a cusp book is, see why this awesome combination of hoodie and skirt and pocket is so darn cool, and you'll see me in a lot of them. Anyway, our request today is for a dance called Soran Bushi. This is for a curriculum that will go together with third and fourth grade Alaskan social studies curriculum where they're learning about Japan. How fantastic. I'm Japanese American, and I taught this dance recently at Unilakleet schools up in the BSSD as well, and it was a great compliment to kids who are learning about Japan, a way to get out of your seats and learn something new. You ready to start? I'm going to take that as a yes. All right. First, we're going to start with a little bit of history. So the dance you're learning today is called Soran Bushi. S-O-R-A-N space B-U-S-H-I. Soran Bushi. Bushi is a term in Japanese we use to describe anything that has folk roots or a folk song. So if you hear Bushi, you can be pretty sure that this, whatever you're about to learn, is deeply embedded in the culture. Soran has no literal translation. It essentially is a way of keeping time, a way of keeping the things together and of everybody staying on beat. So Soran, Soran, one, two, and a. Uh, doesn't have to have little words. It just is a way of keeping us all together, which was the point of the song in the first place. So Soran, before it was a bushi, before it was a folk song and a dance, it was a way of the sailors in old, 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 super old Japan to keep time um, when they were on the fishing boats. They were out fishing for herring in the days before outboard motors and one guy could just power your whole boat out to the middle of the water. Not so in old Japan and probably not in your elders and ancestors uh, time either. So what did they do? They had these great big boats to get all this fish, but they had no outboard motor. So they had to row the boat, but the oars were big. And so it took a lot of men on each oar to push the heavy oar and pull it back in. You'll see that in the dance. And because there was lots of people pushing, not just one oar, but two in order to get those oars working in sync. So they could actually go somewhere as opposed to around in circles or all over the place, they had to find a way to keep time. So phrases like so run, so run, help us stay together. The other thing is that you may already know when you live in Alaska, when the fish are on, the fish are on. And you don't have time for anything else, like sleep, for instance. Same, same with these fishermen. They couldn't sleep. The fish were running and they had jobs to do and fish to catch. So they would fish into the night, overnight, the next day, the next night. Often they were staying up for four more hours than you ever should, to be honest. Um, but they had to find a way to stay awake so that they could keep doing their job. So phrases you'll hear in the song like, Dokoi sho, dokoi sho. Again, don't have a literal translation, but they were a way of sending energy to each other. Heave ho, or let's go, or you can do it, or woo! You get the idea. So, dokoi sho, dokoi sho has no literal translation, but we can essentially think of it as heave ho. And so on, so on, that's a way of us keeping time. The lyrics in the middle, the fishermen made up as they went along. Sometimes they got a little naughty. I don't have any of those memorized. You're welcome, teachers. However, now a dance has been added to it, and the dance showcases some of the moves that the fishermen used to use when they were actually fishing. So you'll see things like 
pulling in a net. You might see tossing nets out or tossing fish onto the other boat. You might see the men pushing and pulling those oars on the boat, keeping time. So now we get a picture of what that fishing maybe used to look like along with the song that tells us how it was and keeps us connected to our ancestry. And what else do you need to know? That it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you ready to learn it? Let's do it. All right, so starting with your feet together and your hands behind you, I'll say the cue phrase, Kamai Te. It's essentially meaning pay attention, listen up, Kamai Te, to which you will answer height. That means yes, and jump your feet apart. And head goes forward like a tabletop. So I'll say Kamai Te, you jump your feet apart and say height. Let's try it. Ready? Kamai Te, height. Got it. Now you're going to take your hand across. I'm going to use my left hand so you can just mirror me. You'll use your right hand across your body and you can use me like a mirror. You're going to go across and make waves with your hand as you bring that across from one side to the other. So this is eight counts to get there. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Do the same thing on the other side. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Do it again. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One more time. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Those are the waves on the ocean. Make sure that you bring your hand all the way across. If you just do it in front of your face, it looks like pew. Somebody had milk for lunch and was lactose intolerant. So take it all the way across, except for when you are marking the dance, just to remember what comes next. You can go pew, 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 all you want. All right, next step. So you finished your last one of these, and now we're gonna grab that rope that has all the fish and the nets, and we're gonna pull it in. You're gonna get down as low as you can. My knees are 40 years old. Yours are much younger. So as you pull those nets in, get down low. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Ooh. <sighs> okay. This way, the announcer will say, Dok koi show, dok koi show, as you put those nets in. You can repeat it after him if you want to. Dok koi show, dok koi show, when you pull the nets in on the other side. If that's confusing, just let the words and the lyrics and the call and response wash over you and just do the moves. Dok koi show, dok koi show, dok koi show, dok koi show. Now you're gonna gather up those nets and you're gonna toss them over to the side of the boat. Go to your right side first. So ran, so ran. And if you wanna repeat here, you can also say so ran, so ran. So that goes. Dok koi show, dok koi show. So ran, so ran. Yeah, this is so that I can hear you. Don't actually do the net and the ear with one hand. So, dok koi show, dok koi show. You say, so ran, so ran, so ran, so ran. You got it. All right, next piece. This is how we row the boat. So, our hands are going to go forward and backward. This is in um, memory of the big oars that the men used to push and I learned this dance as a more traditional folk dance um, from the Seattle Kokon Taiko, uh, Sensei Stan Shikuma. Hi Stan, if you're watching this. Um, so this was a lot about effort of pushing that oar and pulling it back. In this version, <laughs> the oar got lots lighter and a little bit more stylized. So we're going forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards. I'll scoot back so you can see my feet. I'm just rocking forwards on my feet like so. If you want to add a head, you look behind you as you row. Five of those. One, two, three, four, five. After the last one, you stomp your right foot as you punch your right hand to the sky. And in Japanese, you say two times, hi, hi, or as we learned earlier, yes, yes. Hi, hi. So that piece looks like this. One, two, remember there's five, three, four, one more, five, then we stomp and punch, height, height, yeah? My bouquet arrived.
pause, time out for some of the things that are growing in my garden right now. It's early May, May 1st, and April showers bring May flowers. You've maybe have heard that poem before. Here they are, the May flowers. Um, there are some crocuses here, some beautiful peonies. These are chive blossoms in the background. They smell kind of like tiny onions. Mm, not what you would think of for a flower. These are off of one of my fruit trees in the front yard. And uh, I don't know what this is. I got a whole bush of it. So if anybody knows, look it up here. Here's what it looks like you find out for me okay so the next thing we have to do is put this all together with music so i'm going to give you a quick review where we do all of the steps just smaller and faster so that you have a chance to go over all the steps one more time before we put the music on so here's all the steps in tiny form teeny tiny boats teeny tiny ready come on tap you jump out and say hi remember it's tiny and here goes our, our waves. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Do it again. Here's where you can use that pew. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now we grab a rope. Grab a rope. Pull it in. Grab a rope. Pull it in. Take a net. Toss it out. Again. Take a net. Toss it out. Do that again. Rope. Pull it in. Rope. Pull it in. Net. Toss it out. Net. Now rock the boat. Five, four. Three, two, one, and height, height. Yeah? All right, I think we're ready to try it with the music. What do you think? All right, we'll try it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to call out the ready cue. When everyone's head is down, then I'll start the music and we can start the dance together. So, everybody ready? Come on, tet, height. I just know, I know it was in my heart. It was fantastic, I'm so proud of you. All right, quick note for teachers. If you like what you saw here today and you have a curriculum idea that you'd like me to turn into a fun movement activity, write to me at the address you see on the screen. Send me your request along with a little information. Who are you? Where are you writing me from? How old are your students? And how long would you like the activity to be? Is this a five minute brain break in between subjects? Or do you wanna devote an entire day to making this, let's be honest, the most exciting day of your kid's entire school year? Yes? Then write to me and let me know and I'll be happy to put some more of these videos together. You can reach me here and I look forward to dancing with you all again soon. Say bye-bye.